Matthew 28, 19, Jesus told his apostles to go forth and make disciples of all nations. And from the word disciple, we get the word discipline. Boy, and from that word, man, you have a, that word is a weapon, isn't it? Isn't it? Especially when you use the word discipline the way that the dictionary uses it, and especially the way discipline has been taught the way that you were brought up from your parents and from a physical upbringing, from any kind of physical circumstance, discipline, the way it's been taught in schools and so forth. Discipline has been taught to basically condition yourself, to, to pull yourself out of habits, to, to, to pull yourself from other areas, to, to, to just condition yourself here to this, condition yourself to that, pull that away and force yourself and just make sure that you are just conditioned into doing this one particular thing or a series of things, then you're disciplined. That's what it is. And as a result of that, we see discipline being taught from the pulpit in a lot of ways the same way. As a result of that, how do we look at God? Very similar to the way that we were brought up physically. And as a result of that, we get a very disjointed version of God because God's version of discipline is somewhat different. God's version of discipline is simply focus. And the focus that he is mentioning is based on a knowledge of a passion that we have in our full realization of something. Most notably, a realization of his heart. Jesus said he is the perfect representation of God. The Bible says that. And we see nothing but goodness and grace through Jesus. That is the perfect representation of God. So my goodness, so when we, when we come to God in prayer, we bring ourselves, we bring all of our, a lot of our physical circumstances with us. How much of our prayer is physical supplication, asking God for monetization, for food, for health, for something in this physical world to help sustain us. But how often do we come to God when we surrender everything, everything, and just fully experience God in the spirit, in the spirit, fully experience him? Someone says, you can't fully experience God. Have you ever tried it? Have you ever come to God and not bring any physical experience you have with you to the table? Have you ever surrendered everything fully and experienced him in the spirit and seen his heart without any outside sources coming at you in any particular way? Have you seen his love for you? Have you seen how much he loves you? Have you seen what what he has done for you and had that full revelation in the spirit of what he has? Very few people have. Very few people have. And that's not to underestimate, not undermine the good nature and the heart of many of those people. But because they're so physically conditioned, they're, they just have a very difficult time just surrendering everything. When you surrender everything and you throw every single problem out completely everything and just experience God in the spirit and see his heart and just see who you are in him to see why you're here and why he loves you so much then you are now experiencing discipline the way God has defined it as simply focus and it's focused on your passion and your passion, when it becomes him, is now simply a drive. You're not even thinking about discipline. Discipline's back here. It's like, all I want is you. It's so amazing. It's just walking in the love of who you are and just seeing this amazing life. And this spirit is just incredible. And then guess what happens? Then you're focused. You're focused on him. You don't even know you are, but you are. And as a result of that, you put everything in this proper perspective and hence, you're already disciplined. And hence, you're already a disciple. 
So when Jesus told us to make disciples of all nations, he wasn't telling us to go us to be, to be forceful. He told us to go exactly do what he, he had said initially, spread the good news of the gospel. But by doing that in a realization and a revelation of who we already know, who we are in him. That's why he told us to why he told the apostles to wait until the Holy Spirit came and filled them up. And that's why they walk in that revelation of who he knew that they are in him, and they saw the fullness of their of his love for them, and this fullness for his love for the world, for each and every one of his children. Then when people walk in that revelation, they're walking. In that focus, they're walking with that dis discipline. They're walking now as disciples. You know, I've I heard a marvelous quote from Graham Cook. I'll put the link below. He uh, he had a an interview with Bethel Church back in September of 2018. You need to listen to the whole interview. Watch the link below. It's phenomenal. It's amazing because Graham's got such a wonderful knowledge of the heart of God, but. He, he was asked about discipline, and he said, discipline is, some, is something that happens after God has done something, not before. Boo. I heard that. It was like, boo! It was amazing. And that is so anti-world teaching, but so pro-spiritual and so pro-truth and so pro-God's heart. But discipline, we just see it as the way Physic, how this earth has defined discipline. And a lot of that same type of discipline is being taught in, a church, in churches. Oh, you know, the church should do no more than point people to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit just ignite their heart and start them on a journey with him. That's all it's supposed to do. And then the church is supposed to be a celebration to bring people together to walk in just the fullness of who everybody is because we're family. That's what it is. Discipline. Wow, it's, it was, I, you know, you hear that word discipline for so long, I bet you just, you just started knuckling up, didn't you? And you thought, that's just a hard word. I hate discipline. That sounds like something, that sounds like work. Discipline sounds like work. But discipline in God's heart is merely an afterthought. It's merely the focus you automatically attain once you walk in the passion of the fullness of Him. God bless you all. Have a great night. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.